Well over 100 millimeters of rain in the past two days, too much to handle for the city of Ottawa's sewer system. Floods in parking lots, in the streets, and in Ottawa alone, close to 200 flooded basements. And this miserable weather, now record-breaking. It's officially been the wettest year in Ottawa ever. On average, Ottawa gets 943 millimeters of precipitation each year. As of today, we're over 1,200. This is record-breaking. This is record-breaking. Uh, I've never seen a, a year as wet. Total precipitation, rain and snow and ice clouds all combined as we, as we have this year for sure. Question, how should I prepare for future floods? Well, I was here not too long ago, Michael, yeah. telling people about flood coverage. Even though you think it's not going to happen to you, uh, past year events are showing that it, it's going to be recurring more so in the upcoming years. So there are many systems. You can install the, a sump pump with a backup system in your mm -hmm. house. The water might have receded, but residents are still feeling the effects of those floods in Gatineau. Well, months after the water started rising, some residents are still in hotels, others waiting for their homes to be demolished. In the spring, hundreds of people in this area were forced to evacuate their homes because the water was just too high and dangerous. We spoke to one resident who found out just last week that the provincial government was condemning his home and yesterday it was demolished. saying the property was in a floodplain and too expensive to repair. He was promised money as compensation, but has no check in hand. For residents who are allowed to stay, the work is far from over. Still pumping water. Hello. Hi. How are you? Oh, hi, Steve. How's it going? Look, I'm just emptying up my gold bag here in hopes that. Uh, <laughs> so we get two things before it goes into storage. I got some new clubs. I bought some new clubs uh, from Barter. Very nice clubs. Yeah, a massive job ahead. I just talked to Pierre and he says, dude, you got to rip up all your floors. Yeah. And I thought, well, that sucks. <laughs> yeah, because it's all soaked underneath. Okay. Or? Yeah, it's wet underneath, so it's going to be... I, is it structurally oh. sound? or? Oh, yeah, it, it is now. It is now. It still needs... It's the house is still crooked because it's just on temporary stilts. The foundation has to get rebuilt, right? Wow, <laughs> your deck is toast. Deck is done, yeah. Holy Look at my moly. picnic tables are under the deck. <laughs> I, was I was trying to cut them free, but I kind of failed. Jesus. I gotta cut a lot more wood too. And this that. is where the, the hole blew in. Yeah, it's a big hole there. Jesus Christ. The entire wall. I gotta go down there and get some of those shelves out of there. That's gonna be fun. So we're gonna need shelves. So I'm gonna put stuff in, you know, in storage.
Yeah, they came right to my door. That's really, crazy. Imagine a boat coming to your door, right? The front yeah. door? No, they came to the they came to the back door. My boat, and it wasn't a small boat. It was like you know, like bigger was, boat. Well, there were four firemen in, in the boat, so it wasn't like super small. But uh, anyways, they brought me to the end over here where I thought my car was, right? And I didn't see my car in the parking lot. Yeah. In, in, you know, the uh, parking lot for. Uh, for people to take the ferry and stuff, right? Yeah. And all that was there was big trucks. I thought, where's my car? They said, well, if your car is here, you're screwed anyways. <laughs> yeah. Because as soon as you drive out of the parking lot, there's three feet of water on the road. Wow. I thought, oh, f So they're driving me out of there. I think the like, car probably got towed, whatever. I got to get out of here anyways. You know? Yeah. Okay. About half a kilometer up the road this way, there was my car. And the water was just starting to touch the tires. Wow. That's why they, they, the Quebec police had called, uh, believe it or not, they called my ex-wife's cell phone number. <laughs> How the hell could they put that together? My license plate and her cell phone number. Figure that out. That's yeah. crazy. Who's going to pay for the damage? Worried that Quebec's financial assistance to disaster victims won't be enough. What's going to be covered? How is it going to work? Uh, how long is it going to take? Uh, my basement is full right to the windows. But the Quebec Relief Program, like its Ontario counterpart, only covers so much. The basics to get homeowners back on their feet. It's a worry even for Gatineau's mayor, who says any shortfalls in funding could be offset by donations made to the Red Cross. Good evening. A semblance of normalcy is returning to some Quebec neighborhoods tonight after periods of intense rain and flooding. The water levels are still higher than usual and several municipalities in the Outaouais are in states of emergency, but experts say the worst appears to be over. There are signs of relief tonight after floodwaters rip through residential communities across Quebec, leaving some residents hostage in their homes. The water was coming this far up the road. Wow, that's nuts, man. Oh, it's easy to see the aftermath of all this. The water that once covered this entire road has receded, allowing the city of Gatineau to open the street to local traffic and some homeowners to start the cleanup. Sandbag removal. Fuck. Sandbag removal. Oh, Tell man. me why the sandbag thing is totally, totally stupid. Because the water just goes in between the sandbags. Now, if you if you take plastic tarps and you bury the tarps like in the ground, and then put sandbags on both sides of this tarp and build it up, so you got this big tarp. Then yeah. then you're making like a little swimming pool. The water will go through very 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 slow. It'll still get through, yeah. but slow enough that your pumps would work. As you can see, the flooding has overtaken people's lawns. In fact, it was so bad the city of Gatineau had to put gravel on top of the road because the water was so high, cars couldn't pass. Phil must be chasing after this <laughs> truck going backwards. <laughs> Where's the gazebo? I think it's coming up. And that used to be just a little pond. That's a lake. I'm calling it Lake Geyer. Lake Geyer. Yeah. There's a gazebo right there. <laughs> it's upside down too, I think. Yeah, it is. Good evening. Gatineau residents are feeling some relief tonight as water levels continue to recede and the city enters its recovery phase. Well, Katie, many of the residents that we talked to today said the amount of work ahead of them is just overwhelming, but they said it's work that has to be done if they want to move home. Though some sections here are still submerged, other streets in the area have opened. Since peaking Monday, water levels in Gatineau have dropped nearly a meter. Now that the water level is starting to recede, sidewalks and roads look normal to the naked eye, but there is still a lot of damage that can't be seen. Just take a look at this tractor that got stuck in somebody's front yard. Crews ditched this front end loader after its wheels sunk into the muddy grass. The site, a reminder of the impact.
That's a lot of rubble. A lot more rubble than what I left last time. Holy moly. He's got a lot of stuff, eh? Phase two. Wow. There's the wall that once was. Now it isn't. Upstairs still looks good. This is for insurance purposes. This garbage <laughs> is worth $20,000. 80. Oh, How sorry, 80. 20,000 American, I mean. I would, if, somebody, if, some, if somebody offered me 400,000 for this place about three months ago, I would have said, forget it. Yeah. But now I'm, I'm even selling it with an indoor pool. And, uh, <laughs> indoor pool. I carry dirt out of the basement. I was a dirt carrier. I was a dirt carrier too. I was a yeah, China carrier, a dirt carrier, a cinder block carrier. Yeah, I'm very sad said to say I missed that. When we were walking back that. after cinder block said, you can wear boots. I went out and got some nice dirt. Oh, yeah. I was like, I'm so glad you guys told me. Today's uh, goal to archive this and put it in boxes. It's, it, it'd be it'd be nice, but it's not. It's possible, but it's possible it can be done. What was your uh, goal for today? The goal for today was the dock, and and you got it as much as possible. And find a pirouette dinner plate, which I sold last week. Which Julie found. Oh, perfect. Cool. I got that order. I can send it. Nice. Oh, look up. I'm cookware out here, too. I'd like to get this paper all bagged up if I can. Oh, look how nice the pails are. What do you mean bagged up? I want to get that all bagged up. There's a couple of garbage bags. Why did you make a big fire and get rid of it? Is it very wet? I don't think it's too wet. I think it could be dry. Oh man, that's fire. That's fire. That's gone in an evening. Yeah, it's a brunch. What about this case? I remember this. Ronald Geyer. Is that your first uh, Bellcraft uh, brief briefcase? <laughs> Pretty well. Yeah, I won that doing something. Use it forever, eh? Many, many years. In memoriam.
clean up. It's out. Oh shit, where's the rip cord on this thing? What the fuck's this? I'm just tight the arms. Come on, guys. Hey. Peace. Thank God I did this though, because everything would have been rotten. Yeah, yeah. This was plywood everywhere, and the house was originally built with one inch plank. Wood floors. No kidding, so it's I one inch thick. This. I left this. No yeah. kidding. It's one inch, you can see yeah. it. One Whatever. inch tongue and groove. And now this is perfectly sound wood. It's perfectly dry from underneath and on top. Nice. And there's no smell in the house. Huh? No, no, no. Good job. Nothing. It's good. You got right on top of it, eh? Yeah. So you just started tearing things out when it started? Right away. Yeah? Three, four days later. Smart. Just sink. So now I'm just waiting for the city to come in. Okay. Ron's basement. Ron's blown out wall. Today, it's about removing the debris in order to see if we can rebuild a wall using cinder block. Where now the dirt is. The official last of the China. Finally done. Before and after. So, dug all that back, found some concrete foundation, goes all the way through. It's like an archaeological dig. And that was my day's contribution. a lot of work. Alright, here we are again. Next phase. September 23rd. We're having the best weather of the summer. A couple of weeks straight of sun and warmth, which is good. It allows Ron to uh, do this. Looks like his buddy Rick did what could have helped me last time, and that is cut the deck. So now there's room to dig 
and build a wall. And that is what we're doing today. Well, the digging anyway. Next time I video this, it'll probably be a wall. I think there we're ready. Ready to go. And that's what we did today. Looking like it's ready to go. And when she smiles for the camera, you know you love her better. So now we're trying to figure out the, the drainage. We're going to put a little elbow, we're going to go like that and that for the drain. Okay. Right. I guess it has to happen today, huh? Yep. You're cutting Almost. through the thick part. Yeah, I'm doing a bad job. Yeah. Very flexible. By the time you stick that in there and put your pipe that way, it's going to go up just perfect. All right. Trust. Trust, dude. I knew you were putting a pipe there. I'm not going to screw it on you. <laughs> Man. No, but that, that's why I didn't want that glued it's until perfect. I had this pipe ready for it. It's, it isn't that exacting. It's not like a rocket that you have to have to not bolt perfect. This stuff flexes a little bit. And this, this one especially flexes because it's not an inside with an inside. It has that. Yeah. It's totally flexible. Oh, you, you can almost deviate that five degrees and still be good. No problem. Don't stick that in there until the time comes when you have that line. It's yeah, easy. No, it's, just, anyway, it's, just, it's all right. All right, so we moved and changed this pipe. Start a whole new direction against the wall. After the flood, six months after this region was inundated by historic floodwaters, many residents in Gadna are still struggling to get back on their feet. Tonight, we're live from one of the hardest hit neighborhoods, Point Gatineau. Uh, the Quebec government has spent now almost $25 million in flood compensation in the West Quebec region, and the vast majority of the more than 1,500 claimants have indeed uh, received checks to either rebuild or move on. But there remain uh, you know, a few st cases that are still up in the air, and uh, Amanda Pfeffer has been looking into that. And, and Amanda, what do we know about these unresolved claims? Well, let me give you the exact number. It's 1,554 claims uh, that were made, and only 30, all but 31 have been accepted by the provincial government. And among the 31, it doesn't necessarily mean that they have not been accepted. And we met one of these people. I met Ron Geyer. Everyone else on his street in Massa Angers has had their claim accepted. And there he is in a locked battle to prove that he really lives in the house uh, he has on the river there. Tell me about the hat. This is both come Captain Ron, and this is, and we the, were, this is the hat that I wear when I boat. Because we, he was boating today. So that people, yeah, I boated today. I boated for a couple of hours. October 8th. It's like summer still. All right. So what I miss... Look at that, a wall. Now it's beam removal time. <coughs> Strange lighting, here we go. Yeah, I took like the power for a second to go split that wall. Oh, okay. Wow, guys, this is... Uh... <laughs> Another brick in the wall. Another brick in the wall. 
got the neighbor's over at, uh, the neighbor's contractor and uh, gave Ron the lowdown on structure and. Far before those floorboards just start bending. And of course, the new uh, That's new snow. Hey? That's new snow. Holy crap, no kidding, eh? <laughs> All right, not too loose, buddy. We still need it. I'm doing. Yeah, you do. <laughs> <laughs> the part you've been waiting for. Yes, well, the proof is in the pudding, right? You can't, you're talking good talk. Yeah, that's but right. you're walking the log. Place the jack. It may not be straight, but eventually that's going to get replaced with another. Right, yeah. Right, so it's just a squash plate for now and give me back my jack. Give me back my jack, Jack. And nothing came down. This is separate. This and this are separate, and they're now still flush. Yeah. So now the floor is back to level with the front. This one's a little higher right now because it's higher than eight and a half. Are you using a level? Have you any idea? Well, this is level, right? Right, you can see it. Right. Yeah. And then eight and a half has to be eight and a half all the way across. Yeah. So we'll get eight and a half, and then we'll put our cross beams in. And then if we have to move anything around, we got our two, we'll have two points where everything pushes here, two points everything pushes there. You're down to six jacking points that you can move around, and these can eventually come out or get replaced with solid beams, and I can use the, use those for, for moving. Mm -hmm. I brought one more in my truck, but what I need is these. So that's why I'm doing this. Once I get those out of there, I have my jacking capability, and you guys are free to do your whatever inside. Yeah. It frees up everything. Windy and warm. 19 degrees. 19 degrees. Absolutely perfect. Crazy. I don't need the sun. I don't mind. You know, I like I like the cloud. Yep. I especially like wind. I'm a wind guy. Because I used to live in the country, obviously, and we don't want flies on here.
End of day's work. There'll be a cross beam coming out of there. T junction. And the wall will be finished. Whoa, man. Isn't that sexy? Whoa. Number two behind you? Whoa, whoa, hang on. I gotta get. Uh -huh. it. Take a, take a look at the wall first. There it is. How much do you have to cut them? None. Really? It just fit? Half inch all the way around. And did you shim it? What did you put on top? Uh, just the concrete itself. Is the, is the beam actually leaning on it? Did you have to shimmy them in? That's just separate. That, the only spots that are holding are right here. This is, doing, this, is, this is your low point, low point, all the way across. And this is sitting on here, holding all this up. That all moves up separate of, of everything. So it, I'm holding from here and from back there on these two posts. This, this is floating now. This is doing nothing. I just kicked it back in it. That, that fell out. The shims are all different heights all the way down until it was separate and level. And then I pushed it up and I got it flat and everything came good upstairs. Same thing on that one across there. So that's what made this come free. Yeah, that makes sense. Not that I'm not taking it out. It can stay there, but it doesn't need to be supported. Well, it's, it's not... still supporting down there, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, it's still doing the back part. Yeah. That's all it's supposed to do. But the cement underneath here is holding the beam from doing any kind of sagging, any kind of pushing down over the course of time. Let's say over the winter we get two tons of snow on every three feet of the roof, then then yeah, there'll be a little bit of pressure pushing down in between here, but it's not gonna go anywhere. Um, it was about a foot and a half over my front door. And I was fighting the river back and I was winning the battle. But then in the middle of the night. At about four o'clock in the morning, I heard a loud bang and the whole house shook like an explosion. The basement wall on the river side of the house blew in, taking out everything in its wake. Everything was gone, the plumbing, the electrical, everything was destroyed when the wall blew in. But as every other neighbor had inspectors marching through their homes by June. I haven't even had an inspector come here yet. They just, they, you know, I send emails, I, make, I leave messages. The problem, the Ministry of Public Security doesn't believe this is Ron Geyer's principal residence, the main criteria for accepting a claim. And that's despite efforts by Geyer to send documents proving he's lived here full time since 2016. Address for Quebec taxes. Uh, this is Canada Revenue. In the meantime, Geyer has spent money repairing the basement wall, even though it's not at all clear he can even stay. A small section of the home is in the highest risk flood zone across the street. Maurice Lavoie received a demolition order because a part of his home was in the flood zone. You have to tear it down, you have no choice, says Lavoie, and he wonders whether Geyer's repairs across the street will end up being a waste of time and money. But Geyer hopes his claim will allow him to rebuild, like this neighbour. We had to replace the foundation with what they call an immunized foundation. Roxanne Briand has received the money to build up the house so it meets the new flood zone code. She's hopeful Geyer will be able to get the same help from the Ministry of Public Security. I say to the MSP, come, come and talk to his neighbours because we all know where he lives. All Geyer can do now is covet his neighbor's efforts to rebuild and collect the scrap insulation from that project to protect his own basement. I'm going to freeze my butt off, yeah, for sure. It's going to be very cold. It's very cold, but you know, I'll, I'll, su I'll survive, no problem. I'm just worried about the pipes freezing in the basement because if I don't get that insulation finished on top. Amanda, what's next for Ron Geyer? Well, a spokesperson for the Ministry of Public Security says that they uh, usually don't talk about individual cases because of the confidential nature of these files, but did say that they continue to keep this file open and they are asking for more documentation. Ron Geyer says this week he's going to be marching up and down the street trying to get affidavits from his neighbours to say that he really does live there. You can do a live YouTube channel and we could have a humorous subject picked up. People watch us drive yep. all over the country. A whole four views. The whole what? You get a comment yeah. that says yeah. 
Enlarge your penis four inches in 30 days. This is a rad. This is how we get uh, viewership. Yeah. Right. Why don't they have ads for women? Is it tighten your vagina? Why don't they have that? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Why do we have to enlarge our penis? Why do women not have to tighten their vaginas? I think the women don't fall for that shit. So they find different ways to trick them into tightening their vaginas. <laughs> find different ways. Come in for a natural Kegel exercise. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, it's holistic, and you get free tea at the end. You know? <laughs> free tea at the end.